Well, we've had a big week here this week, at least you have. I was looking at the results, and uh, it looks pretty dead gum good, yeah. doesn't it? A, Let's pull that, it up here. That was the case of the blind hog found several acorns. Well, you couldn't have picked a better time, I guess. That's true. That's true. LFA Championship. Uh-huh. Let me make sure I got you up there close enough. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I had one. I had no fish at noon. Okay, now who were you fishing with? I was fishing Cubus? with uh, no. Ken was originally my partner, but he was concerned because I hadn't gotten my uh, test back, test, my COVID test back yet. So uh, John Berich, JB, yeah. ended up fishing with me, and uh, he caught a little fish early. Well, so, it looks like everybody caught him. Quite a few fish. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was it. Was a good day. I mean, you had like day. seventeen pounds or so yeah. uh, of fish here, and uh, yeah. Randy Bunch was right behind you. Uh huh. And Ken did had seventeen pounds on the, on the co angler side. Mm hmm. Yeah. And and interestingly enough, he and I are teamed up this week. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. For the uh, the hardcore semifinal. All right. The only problem with that is he caught his fish on one side of the lake, and I caught mine on the other. <laughs> Y'all going to have an arm wrestle and see which yeah, side you go no to. Joke. Well, hardcore, let's see. Which, which... We, don't, we don't know where we're going to fish yet. Oh, okay. We'll find out Tuesday night. We got a, we've drawn a name, but it's in an envelope, and they go open the envelope Tuesday and tell everybody, and then the lake's off limits Wednesday Tuesday and Thursday. Now, is this a hardcore championship? This That's is what this the semifinal. Is. Semi-championship. Yeah, the semifinal part of the championship. Okay. But to I, make it fair, that's what they've done is they've, yeah. they've said, we'll throw it in a hat and we'll pull a, a side out. <clears throat> and nobody can go pre-fish, so you just everybody shows up Thursday. Of course, the, if you've got a favorite sec- section, you're, you're <laughs> probably going to be pre-fishing that. <laughs> well, you're not going to be pre-fishing. You can't even pre-fish uh, any part of the lake. Can't pre-fish any of it. Okay. It's off limits till Thursday morning. My goodness. So, uh We'll see. Okay, well, this this past championship, yeah. uh, now, what side of the lake you were on? This was LFA. This was LFA. You could fish anywhere you wanted, and I was in Birch. You're up in no, Birch. No, I'm sorry. I keep I keep wanting to do that. No, I was in Glade. 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 Okay, yeah. Glade Bay. Yeah. Yeah, we started out, uh, you know, uh, we started out down the lake on a little pond, did absolutely nothing there, and at 8 o'clock we moved up in the glade and started. Now, started, what were y'all fishing with? As, uh, I, mean, I was throwing Carolina rig. And what kind of baits were you using? Uh, well, I've been doing good on a blue flag power worm, so yeah. that's what I had on. Yeah. John was throwing a Carolina rig, but I don't, I really don't know what he was using. I know he, when I started catching fish, he went back to the blue flag power worm, but, uh, Anyway, we fished across all the good spots that I had, throwing the blue fleck and the rattle trap because Tuesday, Charlie and I pre-fished, and I caught some good fish on a red rattle trap, and that's what I was really counting on. Mm. And they would not they, they would have none of that. Mm. You know, it's amazing how much difference two days makes. But uh, yeah, but they were not on the trap, and I was starting to get a little bit concerned. Although I keep telling myself. This time of year, don't ever start getting worried till three o'clock, because the bite's late. It always is. Sure enough, at noon I caught my first fish, and by twelve thirty I had all but one of the ones that I caught. <laughs> just, just bam! I caught three big fish on three consecutive casts. Wow! Just you know that that, that doesn't happen. No, very, <laughs> very often. <laughs> this is a blue fleck power worm. Blue fleck power worm on a Carolina rig. That's right. Throwing out in the middle of nowhere. And I thought, well, if there was one, maybe there's another one. Mm-hmm. And I threw out there, and I said, John, there's another one. I set the hook, got it in. And I threw back out there and set the hook on the third, and he said, that's enough of that. <laughs> 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 anyway, <clears throat> we sat there the rest of the day, needless to say. He, yeah. caught, he caught a couple more small ones, and I caught one other small one. But... Uh, Anyway, it was just, it was a strange sort of situation. Yeah. Uh, it was not something we had found in pre-fishing. It was just a, and I don't, I, I didn't have time to go out there and explore it and see what was holding the fish. I just know how to find it again. So, right. 
if that's the section we fish Thursday, that's where I'll go. And if now, what was your water temperature at that time? Sixty three, sixty four. Okay, it's been as low as fifty. It's been it's been in the fifties for two or three weeks. It we mm. go out in the morning to be in the fifties, but it's up now. It's in the it starts off in the sixties. Yeah, and gets up to sixty five, sixty six. Well, so, that lake hadn't turned over yet, has it? Well, they say tell? it. They say it has. I don't know. Everybody talks about that brown scum on the water, and maybe that is from the lake turning over. I don't know. I, I, I haven't spent enough time on the main part of the lake to, to have an opinion. Mm-hmm. Cause that, that's what turns over. Back up in Glade and Birch and the, the creeks, they don't turn over. You know, I, I don't know what the minimum water depth is, but I suspect it's at least 15 feet mm-hmm. before you get a turnover because the water on top has to be cooler by x number of degrees and i've heard what it is but i can't remember but it has to be cooler than the water down deep and then something triggers it and it just right. inverts i do remember being on lake lydia those of you that don't know lake lydia is out east of quitman we had a lake house out there when i was growing up my dad and i had a trot line out and we were out there at it seems like it was 11 o'clock at night. It was probably just 6 or 7, but it was dark. And the lake started turning over around us and scared the living poo out of me. Really? Yeah, it was like being in a cauldron, just, <laughs> just bubbling and stinky, you know. Uh, really? Swamp gas smell, yeah. yeah. Is it a pretty small lake? Is it? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. It is. It is. And <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. Yeah. I never. That's that's my that's my one time actually being involved in it, huh. and it was at night, which made it even worse. Oh yeah, yeah. But, uh, Wondering what's going to come out of this. Uh, I thought I could just see monsters <laughs> <laughs> coming up out of it. Right? And of course, like Lydia had something else. I guess it was. It, I don't remember what where, whether it was before that happened or whatever. But they 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 built the lake back in the forties, I guess. And I remember my grand, my great uncle building the ca- the cabin out there when there was nobody else on the lake. And then as it built up, anyway, in the mid fifties, early early fifties, probably large sections of the bottom of the lake. You know, you got a, you got this this creek bottom. Yeah. And it's it's grown it. It's got bushes and stuff like that on it. But it's a, basically a sandy soil. Mm-hmm. But uh, large sections of that bottom, the vegetation rotted, and I guess enough bubbles built up in it that big sections of the bottom just popped to the surface. Really? Yeah, we, we got up one morning <laughs> and looked out the window, and there was there was dry ground out in front of our pier. Yeah. It wasn't really dry ground. It was just it a, was, an island yeah. that had come up and blown back into our pier. And that went on for several years. I've, I've never seen anything like that before or since. But uh, you could go out one day and go brim fishing and find them right here, and go back the next day and yeah, it's it's moved. <laughs> There's nothing there. My goodness. But uh, anyway, Lake Lydia, the the turnover. I do remember that it was it was scary to a young kid. Hmm. But anyway, we, so as far as Lake Fork turning over, I don't have any idea whether it has or not. A lot of people are saying it has. The water temperature is so high, I don't know that it's been cold, that the water temperature has dropped enough for yeah. it to actually turn over. But but again, you know, that's somebody that fishes the main part of the lake would have a, a better idea on that. Now, now, did you do any uh, boat driving during the Bassmasters? No, no. Okay. We saw them. They were back there. Yeah. They were back in Glade. There was four or five of them. They stuck to the, they stuck to the timber. And uh, we watched them and never saw saw one guy catch one small fish, and that was it. Hmm. Of course, we were paying attention to what we were doing and not to them. But they'd, they'd periodically gather up and the whole, the the pro would leave and his whole entourage would follow him out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then here another one would come. And, yeah. you know, so how the boat wakes were a bit of a problem, but... Uh, they, they stayed far enough away from us. They had absolutely no effect on us at all. Hmm. And then Charlie and I went back out yesterday. Yesterday was the final. 
with and I have no idea how it turned out. But we went over to we launched in Big Mustang at Pope's. Yeah. It was so foggy you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. But we fished the bank in there along with everybody else. And I never never saw but uh well we it, that take that back. We saw one or two running you could always you could always figure out what it was because you'd see one boat and then there'd be six or seven behind him just hauling potatoes going up or down up yeah. or down the lake and they were still doing that when we quit at one o'clock because we decided it was time to go get a hamburger hmm. we caught two little fish yesterday we're, we're hoping that's section two section two goes from the, the spillway a line from the spillway to the point at little caney all the way around to the 515 west bridge so we were fishing that charlie and i both that's our least favorite section so we figured we better spend some time in there and everybody had been talking about catching fish off boat docks so we tried to boat dock fish we did no good whatsoever Hmm. with the boat dock fish the boat docks in there primarily had no water under them i mean it was you could see that you could see the posts going in the ground yeah we went around to Little Mustang, and the the docks were in much better shape. They go out to 10, 12 feet of water, but we still we caught nothing. And there were there were several people in there pre-fishing for something, fishing the docks. And again, we didn't see anyone catch anything. And then we went over to the mouth of Wolf Creek, and I caught one out there in the trees on the ridge that's on the what west side of, of wolf creek mm. and still then, using the blue flake power blue worm. flake power worm yeah and then we left i threw we saw another we saw a boat come in there it came in the same time we did actually and they were throwing crankbaits out in there they were farther out in the timber and I, we saw them catch three fish on a crankbait so i've got that filed back here for just in case yeah i think i've got a crankbait that's you know real similar to it it was a light colored bait looked like a tennessee shad or something and they were throwing it way out there and you know working it back through the trees so i like doing that and it's it's interesting on a crankbait you pop it over a limb and it goes whoop, here it goes i like <laughs> it's been so long since i've caught any crankbait fish it would be nice to have a day of crankbait fish. Hey, yeah yeah but anyway <laughs> So, uh, this week, like I say, we do not know where we're going to fish. If we go to section one, yeah, that's we'll be in Glade. I'm Back sure. in Glade. Yeah. If we go to section two, odds are I'm going to go to Little Caney. I just have more confidence in Little Caney than I do the rest of it. I may try down at the mouth of Cheney Branch. I like that area. Yeah, yeah. You and I had some good, yeah, good yeah. time there. Yeah. So. Uh, try that if we if we go to section three in Birch. Oh, uh, go back up in Birch, I guess, and had a, the, we, the tournament we had in there several weeks ago. I don't remember when it was, but uh, but I, I think I won that tournament throwing a spinnerbait, which is the first spinnerbait bite I've had in years. <laughs> so I'll go back in there and try that again. Yeah, and mix in a blue flake worm. And, so on and so forth. I'm sort of anxious to go back into Glade and try throwing a Carolina rigged swim bait. You know, and not working it real with the with the worm, work it extremely slow. John Barch, matter of fact, made the comment that he made three casts to my one, which is that's typical. Because hmm. I do work it real slow. But uh, I've also caught fish using a, a Carolina rigged swim bait, working it faster, just hopping it, you know, dragging it across the bottom. And you know when you get a bite because they, they hit it pretty hard. Mm-hmm. So that might that might generate a bite. Did Ken ever send you some swim baits? And, yes, he, and he, did, sort of he did. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, there's one that's blue flag, which I'm, you know, I thought about putting it on possibly and trying it during the it's they're they're so huge though i don't know that i've got hooks big enough for it that's, <laughs> Yo, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean they are they're you know they're like yeah, they're, that. they're big big baits yeah. you know so but big fish big baits that's the way it goes 
and you can cut it. You can take a razor blade and cut a belly slit in it, you know, a hook slit in the belly, uh-huh. and make it make them work for you. Yeah, like that. So okay. the main thing he sent me that I'm I'm looking forward to trying, and I didn't have them with me last Thursday, are some blue fleck. He calls them stogies. Mm-hmm. But he's got one. It's a six inch. It, it's a Senko is what it is, but it's blue flack, and it, it's a good looking bait. Yeah. And if blue flack, if blue flack is truly what they're looking for, it ought to work. Hmm. We'll see. Well, yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, yeah, Ken Ken Keebless, Keebless, yeah, is my partner for this week. Like I said, he he won the the co angler side last week, but he was fishing on the the Lake Fork side of the lake. You know where he was over there? Uh, no, but I bet he remembers. <laughs> well, I'm sure he does. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I, I've got a general idea, yeah. Uh, and so if we draw, if section two is drawn, you know, if, if one or two is drawn, we ought to be in good shape. Yeah. And if three is drawn, we'll have to just we'll have to get in there and grub it out with everybody else. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. We can grub it out with them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then the top, the top fifty percent of boaters and non-boaters from this tournament go into the the final next week. Okay. So that's that's the way that'll be made up. And next week will be the hardcore championship. Right. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Janie woke up the other day and she's looking on Facebook and she says, Greenberg turkey caught fire and exploded. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's the first I'd heard of it. Yeah. I looked at it and I says, of course it did. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is 2020. Everything happens during 2020. Uh-huh. That does so, sound uh, about right, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it did, you know. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we'll see what happens next week, and uh, that gets us for this week, I think. Yeah. I ran into another one of our viewers. Oh, yeah? Yeah, at, uh, I was at Sartre Marine waiting on Brian because my trolling motor was making a funny noise, and this guy pulls up, and he's got a, got a skeeter, and he was talking about having messed his prop up in his lower unit, which is something that I just got through going through. So I was visiting with him, and he said, your name's Bob Roberts, isn't it? And I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I knew where that was going. Oh, Lord. But he, uh, his name was Charlie, and I'm sorry, Charlie. I just can't, I can't remember it. But anyway, we, we talked about fishing and, you know, the usual sort of stuff. And... Uh, just wanted to give him a shout, even though I can't remember his name. So they got your blower unit fixed. Oh and yeah, working good. Service Marine oh, yeah. did. Yeah, I was back in. I I didn't. You know, I couldn't believe that we we did a show Monday, and I hadn't even turned the claim in yet. And Thursday, which I didn't fish that Thursday, but Thursday I went and picked the boat up. It was ready to go. Yeah, and I already had the check from the insurance company. So you know that. That was unbelievable that it happened that way. Wow. But that's, you know, all state, they get on it. Huh. Well, that's good. And having and found, having one ordered in, or having one located in Atlanta. And when I have a problem like that, I tell them to go ahead and get it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll worry about the insurance paying for it later. Just get it here. Right, yeah. So he ordered it Monday, and it came in Tuesday. And it's supposed to be five days. So that was, I was impressed with that. Yeah. But it's it's odd to have a lower unit that's got paint on it and the skeg doesn't have chunks knocked out of it. You know that's hmm. and the guy that I was talking to was ta- he was worried about his his lower unit was the skeg was bent a little bit and the, the prop just had some bars on it. Now to me it looked great. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was almost new. <laughs> like brand new. Almost. Yeah, really. And he was he was concerned about getting it fixed anyway. Hmm. Anywho, yep. Okay. All right. I'm ready to go fishing. Well, I know one thing. I'm sick of all this crap that's going on.